It has been a really long time since I did a video on scripted, but I thought this time we would try something a little bit different. It's just kind of been a theme with the channel lately, but I hope you guys don't mind the experimentation too much. Earlier this week, I was doing some Twitch live streams of a challenge playthrough of Paper Mario, where I tried to go through the entire game at level 1. I would lock my star points with hacks, and that way I could never level up. I was stuck with 10 heart points, 5 flower points, and 3 badge points. It makes this really limiting. I thought we'd go through and do a level 1 all bosses challenge. And since it's for YouTube, I was able to sit down and plan out every single strategy, and it's kind of like a little speedrun of each fight at level 1. I think it turned out pretty cool. The rules of this challenge are Mario must stay at level 1 at all times, we may not level up partners either, so you can't super rank them or ultra rank them. They're gonna be pretty bare bones with what we can do with partners. I also didn't end up needing life shrooms, so I suppose we could also say those aren't allowed, but I believe I did have them as a backup in case my strategy didn't work. Thankfully I didn't need them, but it is possible to do this at level 1, no partner upgrades, no life shrooms. So uh, these first two fights that I just kind of talked over, those are basically scripted. You were always scripted to lose the first Bowser fight, and the fight with Junior Troopa is you just press A and you win. We're still super early game, so this next fight is actually identical to how we do it in speedruns. We're going to start by targeting the Red Goomba with Power Jump and Goombario's Head Bonk. We need to do one extra point of damage to the Red Goomba because he has 7 HP and his brother has 6. And also, we're going to try to kill them both on the same turn. If you don't kill them on the same turn, then there's a little extra cutscene where they're sad to see their fallen friend in combat. So yeah, we just Power Jump the blue. We don't have to Head Bonk with Goombario because he only has 6 health and we're going to use a Fire Flower to kill both in one turn. This will do 3 damage to each. Now we have the Goomba King, and he has 10 health. We also have to refight the Red and Blue Goomba Bros, but they are in a weakened state from the previous fight. We start by power jumping the Goomba King, and we target the Goomnut Tree with Goombario. This will make a Goomnut fall, and it will hit all enemies. Goomba King has two attacks here. He can either make Goomnuts fall on Mario, or he'll just kick him. He just kicked me, but the Goomnut attack is faster. We can very easily finish this in two turns with another power jump and a head bonk on the Goomba King. For the Koopa Bros, we're just gonna have power jump still. And in phase one here, we have to fight this Bowser. We start by doing a power jump, and I'm gonna do nothing with Bombette here. Blocks do not matter in this fight, but we do need to bomb. And then we're going to use a honey syrup to restore five flower points. Right now he has taken seven damage. We need to do ten to actually move on to phase two. But the most important part is that honey syrup. We want to enter phase two with enough flower points to do a bomb. We're going to finish Bowser here with the power jump. And coming up is the Koopa Bros. Notice that we actually didn't use Bombat yet, so it is still our turn, and that was part of the setup here. We're gonna use Bomb, because unlike most moves, it instantly knocks down all the Koopa Bros, and that's super useful for us because we have a Pow Block and a Fire Flower. The Pow Block does two damage to all of them, and it also skips their Get Up animation, which saves a few frames. And then we just finish these guys off with a Fire Flower. They all had five health, but uh, the items are really nice for this fight. I strongly recommend going into the Koopa Bros with a Pow Block and a Fire Flower no matter what kind of playthrough you're doing. So this is the rematch with Junior Troopa right after Chapter 1. Again, we are starting at 10 heart points and we have Power Jump equipped. Turn 1 is to just Power Jump him and bomb him, so we are blowing all 5 FP on turn 1. That means we can't really use Bombette anymore, it's just not worth our time. But we do have a Fire Flower and a Thunderbolt. That Thunderbolt you can grab on Pleasant Path on the way to Cooper Bros Fortress. 
Both items pierce Junior Troopa's one defense in this fight, so that is very nice for getting the 15 health that we need, 15 heart points of damage that we need on him. And that's gonna do it. It is time for our first optional boss. This is Blooper, and it's the earliest we can fight him. We start off turn one with a Dizzy Dial. This has an 80% chance of working, and it has a plus one turn modifier on Blooper. Finishing off turn one with Gumbario's Headbonk to do two damage that we're gonna need. Thunder Rage is nice, because it's just a clean five damage. So right here, this is nine of Blooper's 30 heart points. Turn two and three are the exact same, we just Thunder Rage Headbonk. The problem is, we still need to do 14 damage, and he's gonna wake up soon. Thankfully, we have Power Bounce, and Blooper is pretty weak to Power Bounce. There is a high cap on this boss, meaning it's not gonna force me off until I do, like, 12 bounces here. And 12 is just what we need, combined with another Head Bonk, and that is 30 damage. We have yet another optional boss, this is Buzzer. We're gonna start off turn one again with a Dizzy Dial. This has a 70% chance of working, and a plus one turn modifier. Flying enemies are very susceptible to this. So yeah, we have Paracarry do a Shell Shot. And we're gonna be using Thunder Rage, similar to Blooper, but now we have Paracarry. Shell Shot is three FP, and we just used it twice, that's more than five. The whole reason we even have 10 is because we spent all three badge points on the badge Flower Point Plus, which is going to give us a maximum of 10, very important for this fight. We can also use the Maple Syrup that we got in Koopa Bros Fortress to recover our FP. And that's going to give us the two more Shell Shots that we need in conjunction with a Thunder Rage to dish out 40 damage to Buzzer. Now we have the Chapter 2 boss, Totten Koopa. He's got 30 HP, and all three turns of this battle are the exact same, so sorry for not making that super interesting. The idea here is that we want to use FP+, plus so that we can get three Shell Shots in, and we want to bring along three Thunder Rages. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, you can get infinite Thunder Rages from Harry's shop in Toad Town after Chapter 1. They are 20 coins each though, so they are pretty expensive. You don't need to use these strategies at all, by the way. You can definitely win without Thunder Rages here. It's just, this is a very clean and fast way to do the Totten Koopa fight at level one. It's really nice that Thunder Rage also targets all enemies, so we can take care of the Chomp as well. Now we have Tubba's Heart, and there's a very important badge that we picked up. It's called Mega Rush, and at one HP, it will increase our attack power by 4, and it's only one badge point. So you can still stack it with Power Bounce, which is a badge that we got in Cooper Bros Fortress. You'll be able to deal a lot of damage to Tubba's Heart if you enter the battle at 1 HP. The first turn, we're not even scared of getting hit, because he will always charge. The second turn though, we need to go out of sight with Bow. Tubba's Heart technically has 50 HP. However, at 45 damage done, that's all you need. The fight will end. For us, that's just going to be one more jump combo, and we are done with the Chapter 3 boss in three turns as well. Although, that's not entirely true, we do have the very, very short phase with Tabo Blubba. And again, we're in peril. We do a jump combo. He's already dead. The heart is the real boss of this chapter. yet another encounter with our boy Junior Troopa. We are starting at 1 HP because of Mega Rush. And turn 1 is about a 5 cap power bounce. The main thing is we just want to get a 15 damage in, go out of sight. He's gonna miss his attack, and then we're going to use the Star Power Refresh for the first time. This is going to give us 5 heart points and 5 flower points back. Remember, we don't have flower point plus equipped anymore. So we're down to 5 again, and we will be for the rest of all these boss fights. Junior Troopa conveniently does 
5 HP of damage, so we purposely don't block to get back into peril. We do another power bounce boosted by Mega Rush. We're gonna go out of sight once again. It's really nice, power bounce is 3 FP, out of sight is 2, so they combo together real nicely. And that is 30 damage done so far. One more jump combo will put us at 40, which is exactly what we need to finish off Junior Troopa here. The Lantern Ghost. This is one of the more interesting fights mechanically. We have to do damage to the Lantern to cause the light level to get bright enough to actually be able to target the Lantern Ghost, so two smacks will do the trick. We do another Mega Rush Power Bounce. We want to get a 5 cap here, although if you don't get a 5 cap, that's okay. We can make up the damage later. He's going to blow out the lantern, so we're not afraid of getting hit. However, we do need to jump here because his next ability is going to target Mario and his partner. We're going to go out of sight for that. So this light attack would have hit Bo if we don't block it, and it would have killed Mario. Out of sight's really important there. Now we're going to eat a honey shroom which is going to do the same as Refresh without that long animation. And he's going to knock us right back into peril, similar to Junior Troopa last fight. I got 4 capped here with Power Bounce, that's okay. We just got to finish him off with a small little smack. If you got 4 capped on the first Power Bounce, just do a 4 smack instead of a 2 smack. That is an exact kill, 40 damage. Next up is the optional Anti-Guy. Anti-Guy is again easily defeated by Mega Rush and Power Bounce. Actually, more importantly, is Power Shock here. That's gonna stun him, and you can maximize it if you're really good at mashing A. Watt's Power Shock is super important, that's why I waited until after the Lantern Ghost fight to do this one. All we need to do are jump combos with Electro Dash, and we'll do a Power Bounce next turn. If you get a 5 cap, then couple that with another Electro Dash and you have 50 damage, which is exactly what you need. Time for General Guy. This is a really interesting fight because there are multiple phases with Shy Guys. We do use Mega Rush, of course, but we're not going to be using Power Bounce. We have D-Down Jump. These guys, as a squad, have 15 HP. So just do a jump combo boosted by Mega Rush and a triple smack. That's the 15 damage you'll need. General Guy is going to show up, but he is going to spawn more adds first. We have a pair of Stilt Guys we need to take care of. They each have 7 heart points. Conveniently, we have a spread damage move capable of dealing 7 damage exactly. That is Star Storm, which we got from completing the previous chapter. Now he's going to spawn the Shy Stacks, and these guys can do quite a bit of damage if we are not prepared. They have 10 HP each as well. We're going to take one out right away with a jump combo. But we do need to go out of sight, because we can't kill both in a single turn. The only way you can do that is maybe with like double dip, double thunder range. I just didn't think it was worth using for this fight. We're gonna use the spicy soup. Now I got these by cooking a fire flower, and they restore exactly 4 health and 4 FP. The shy stacks will deal 4 health worth of damage, and the 4 FP is all we need to get back up to 5 in this case. D-Down Jump is great against General Guy because his tank has some defense. And we're going to go out of sight because he can one-shot us. Of course, we are at 1 HP. He also has two moves, the Light Bulb and he'll sometimes just throw a bomb. Those do different damage. However, we do have some control over how much damage we take by blocking. So I ate another spicy soup. We don't block the bomb because that does 4. You do need to block the Light Bulb though if he did that. And now we have enough FP for a D-Down Jump, and another Out of Sight. Getting lucky with the fast attack animations, I like it. 
And you can jump or hammer here. Hammer will do enough damage. Jumping is generally going to do more though because of how damage scales on this game. And that's going to do it for general guy. Electro Blooper. So this one's pretty interesting because we're using Double Dip for the first time, and for three flower points and one badge point, it lets us use two items in one turn. So I very quickly used a Thunder Rage, and then ate a Volt Shroom. The Volt Shroom is going to be important for two reasons. The first is we want Blooper to make contact with us. He has two moves, he just used the right one, so we got the one extra damage we needed on him. And now we have the Mega Rush boost, because he did 4 damage to us, and we started this fight with 5 HP. And here's where the Volt Shroom's second benefit comes into play. It lets us have immunity to Electro enemies. So because he was electrically charged, normally he would deal 1 damage, and it wouldn't let us complete our jump combo. But the Volt Shroom let us do it. Now we just do out of sight, and we're gonna finish him off next turn with another jump combo. If you got bad luck here with the first attack and he didn't use the move that makes contact on turn one, he's gonna be doing the electric charge again next turn, so you don't wanna jump on him if the Volt Shroom is expired, but uh, you could sacrifice Bo, she'll take a damage, but it will kill him. Fuzzipede is super easy with Power Bounce and Mega Rush, we just walk into the fight, we use Power Bounce, you're very likely to get at least five bounces here. And boom, he's dead. Lava Piranha. Okay, this one's got two phases. The first phase, we're gonna start at 10 HP. We have Mega Rush and we have Double Dip. So we just Double Dip a Thunder Rage. The reason is it knocks out his Lava Buds, which have 8 HP each. So we did 10 to all. And we're also gonna do a Smack on Lava Piranha's head. Lava Piranha's head will have two chances to attack after this. He's going to do 5 HP of damage each time, so we do need to block one so it doesn't kill us, and it will put us into peril. Uh, we're going to eat a Honey Syrup so that we have enough flower points for Phase 2. Right here is when we get into peril. That means that our jump is going to do way more damage. Currently, Lava Prana has taken 30 damage, and each phase has 40 health, so after this Out of Sight clears up, we're gonna finish off phase 1 with another jump combo. These jump combos with Mega Rush are just way too good, because they are no FP, and 12 damage? You can't really ask for much better. Phase 2, he is fiery, and that means he has elemental weaknesses to water and ice. We're gonna use Double Dip, Snow Mandal. The Snow Mandal normally does 4 damage, but it will do 6 to each while they are on fire. That's only for the first one though, now they are not on fire, so this next one is only gonna do 4. But hey, that's 10 damage, for just Mario on turn 1. We'll tack on an extra 4 with Smack. And the great thing about knocking out all of the Buds and the Head in Phase 2 is that they won't even come back until turn 3. So we get a free turn. And as you guys have probably noticed, that's super good with Mega Rush. So now we can do another 12 damage, more Smack. Lava Prawn has already taken 30 on Phase 2. But. They're all going to come back. We came prepared with another Snow Mandal. It's going to do 6 this time because he is ignited. And now that he's no longer fiery, we can hit him with Bow Smack. And that turn right there was the final 10 damage we needed. This next rematch with Junior Troopa is pretty simple if you're prepared for it. I put on Spike Shield and Mega Rush for this one. So yeah, we entered with one heart point, and he went for a swim. 
so that's why half of his health got taken away immediately. He swam too hard. Jump combo will do 10. Out of sight will save us. And if you can't already tell, we're just going to do another jump combo. That'll put us at 20 HP, and that's all he has. Spike shield is really crucial for that to work. This next optional boss is pretty challenging if you don't know what you're doing here. He has 70 health and does lots and lots of damage. However, he is very, very vulnerable to sleep. There's a couple things going on right here. The first is I use Goombario to flip him. And then when he's flipped, you can target his tail. His tail has no defense, and that's another one of Kent C. Koopa's properties. He has super high defense, in addition to a super high attack and HP. The Sleep Stomp that I have equipped, in addition to Mega Rush, has an 80% chance of working every time, and it has a plus one turn modifier on Kent C. Koopa, so really, Sleep just destroys this guy, and make sure you are targeting that tail. You really don't want to forfeit any damage against someone with 70 HP. Toward the end of Chapter 6, we have the Spike fight. Spike has 50 HP, but he has pretty low attack. We enter the fight with 9 health, and we do a double dip egg missile combo, which does not crash the game here. We're also going to do a smack, so that is 16 damage on Spike. We purposely did not block that attack, because he's going to put us into peril next turn. We also have Power Rush though, and Power Rush gives us 2 extra damage while we're in danger, which is 5 HP or less. It does not stack with Mega Rush once we get Peril, but it is important for getting extra damage on that turn 2 jump combo. Notice we do more damage now with Mega Rush. And we're gonna go out of sight to live one more turn. One more jump combo is going to finish him off. Alright, I've heard this next boss gives people a lot of trouble in casual playthroughs, so I'm sure this one will be interesting. A lot of it's going to be AI manipulation and chill out. Chill out lowers attack power by 3 for 4 turns. Pretty good ability. We're gonna do one smack here to spawn one Tough Puff. That is so that Huff and Puff will not attack us. He's gonna heal this turn, and he's only gonna heal one HP, so who cares? Also, Chill Out affects the Tough Puffs that spawn, so they won't do any damage to us either, and we are safe at one heart point. Now we are gonna do some actual damage here. I also grabbed the Ultra Boots before this fight because it makes it easier, and you can get them as soon as you have Lackluster. These guys are going to do no damage, however, I also equipped Close Call because we had a free badge point available. That just speeds up some of these animations when it works out, and it did just there. And I got super lucky and dodged the win too. It wouldn't do any damage though if you max out the block for that. We're going to smack first because it spawns more tough puffs, and then we're going to use a shooting star item. Shooting Star is going to knock out everything, so that's really nice. However, it is going to hit Huff and Puff and spawn more Tough Puffs. So the whole reason for using Smack first was so that we kill more Tough Puffs, because he is going to heal. Not a very good heal, only 4 HP. We're going to do big damage with Mega Rush and the Ultra Boots. We're going to just Smack again. Pretty much routine here. Chill out will expire after this turn, so this is the last turn we get damage reduction, and it's going to get a little bit tricky. Huff and Puff is scripted turn by turn, so there's not really any randomness to this fight. We know exactly what he's going to do. This turn he's going to charge up, so we came prepared with an egg missile. We don't want to jump on him and die. We don't have a Volt Shroom handy. We want to do 6 damage though. And we're gonna go out of sight, because that Electro Charge, he's charging up for a really big attack, and Chill Out just faded. The Tough Puffs would have killed us, and this move would have done way too much damage even with Chill Out. Out of sight is just super useful there. And he's just about dead, so let's finish him off.
Now for the last blooper fight. We start at 6 HP, we have Mega Rush and Power Bounce, and I lead off with an Egg Missile, because we don't have a boosted jump yet. Gonna smack with Bo, that's 10 damage. He's got 70 health though, so quite a bit. Now that we're in peril, we are gonna do a big Power Bounce. You want at least 5 there. I just stopped early to show that this works regardless. And then we're gonna smack again. The reason is, Super Blooper is gonna spawn Blooper Babies, so he's not gonna attack. Little Blooper Babies are cute, and we're not gonna kill them yet. We're gonna use a Dizzy Dial. The Dizzy Dial has a 100% chance of working on the babies, and a 60% chance on Super Blooper. So I got lucky enough for it to work on Super Blooper. Even if it doesn't, you can pretty easily win this fight, because Super Blooper will charge up, and you can avoid the attack with Out of Sight. We're just going to be doing some jumps here, and on the final turn when they get out of the Dizzy, we're going to use a Shooting Star to kill everything. The Blooper Babies have 6 health, which is what a Shooting Star does. Even if you kill Super Blooper, the babies stay alive, and they would have killed us, so that Shooting Star does matter. Oh hey, it's Junior Troopa. The strats for this one are actually pretty neat. We're going to use Mega Rush, Power Rush, and Last Stand. And Chill Out. You guys know what Chill Out does, but Last Stand will have the damage that we take from all attacks while in danger. And that half, it actually rounds down. So a 9 damage move will get divided by 2, that's 4.5, but it will round down to 4. Last Stand damage calculation takes place before blocking, which is pretty big. And, um, and Last Stand, Power Rush, and Mega Rush are all one badge point, so it really works out for us. After the Chill Out, we're not going to block, and we'll do 5 damage, knock us into danger. Then we're just going to use a Power Rush boosted jump combo with Electro Dashes. We're also not going to block the next attack, and that's going to put us at 3 HP because of Last Stand. Do another jump combo. What we're really doing is trying to make it so that we get into peril on the last turn we need to finish him off with a really strong Mega Rush jump combo. We do need to hit our blocks though. If you don't hit them, you will die, so might want to bring a life stream handy for this fight. But yeah, that last turn we just use a Mega Rush powered jump combo with Electro Dash. That is a 51 damage kill. Right here we have Monstar. This guy is pretty much the same as Fuzzipede, we're just gonna do a power bounce from Peril. Boosted by Mega Rush, we're just gonna do four bounces and that's gonna be enough to kill him. The fights are getting really difficult now, so we're gonna start off Crystal King with a Shooting Star that is going to knock out the Crystal Bits. Crystal King is programmed to spawn the bits only if he didn't spawn the bits the previous turn and only if he's in Phase 1. He's in Phase 2 once you do 35 HP worth of damage, and in Phase 3 once you do, uh, 50. So he's gonna spawn bits again, didn't attack. We're gonna use an Egg Missile, and we're gonna use Electro Dash. We need to block all three bits, that's gonna put us into peril. If you miss, you die. There is a bit of luck coming up though. You don't need to do it, but it is pretty important to getting a really clean level 1 Crystal King fight. There's a star spirit power that we got from chapter 6 called Timeout. It has a 50% chance of working on the Crystal King, and he has a minus 2 modifier. A minus 2 turn modifier, I should say. However, Timeout has a plus one modifier itself. It is more effective than, say, a stopwatch item. It does one more turn. If you status the Crystal King, it also kills the bits like that, and we're going to do an untimed Electro Dash because we do need one extra damage. Now we can do nothing with Watt and use D-Down Jump twice to do a lot of damage to the now stunned Crystal King. And then a final jump combo will finish him off, he won't even have a chance to heal. The whole point of getting him down before we did the timeout is that he has a chance to heal once you do 32 damage. So we did exactly 31 before using the timeout. Before we go to chapter 8, we are going to take on the dojo, so Chan is super easy at this point. We're just going to use Mega Rush Power Bounce, just do a 3 bounce, you're good, you win. Just make sure that uh, you remember to fill up your FP before you go to Lee. As for Lee, 
We're gonna do the exact same thing, however, instead of 15 HP, he has 20, so we do need to do a 4 bounce. That's gonna do it for him. More interestingly, though, is the Master. We're gonna start at 1 HP for the Master as well, but instead of Power Bounce with Mega Rush, we're gonna use Mega Rush and Last Stand. And we're gonna lead with Chill Out. This is kinda similar to the Junior Troopa fight in Chapter 7. We chill out, and we're gonna use Smack. And we need to block his attacks to stay at 1 HP without dying. His attacks normally do 6 damage, but with Chill Out it is 3 damage. Then the last hand calculation comes into play, which divides that by 2, that puts it at 1.5, it rounds down to 1, and then a block will put it at 0. So we can survive with last stand and Chill Out. Just do some jump combos and Smack with Mega Rush. You'll be all set with the Master. But there are two more iterations of the Master, so he's gonna get more difficult soon. Okay, the Master 2. We're starting at 10 HP this time. This is a lot more similar to the Junior Trooper fight in Chapter 7. Power Rush, Last Stand, and Mega Rush were my badges of choice. And we're going to use Chill Out first turn. We're also not going to block. It's exactly the same as the setup of Junior Troopa, except that we're using Smack instead of Electro Dash, because he has no defense. So yeah, don't block that attack. Puts us in danger. Power Rush is going to boost our regular jump. We're just going to do a Jump Combo Smack, Jump Combo Smack, Jump Combo Smack until Chill Out wears off, and we also need to keep an eye on what moves he's doing. The Master 2 has two different moves. Pretty sure I got lucky every time where he just did the single hit attack. You still need to block it. You need to block every time. However, if he does the multi-hit attack, you only need to block one. And I can't stress that enough. We're gonna do 5 HP to 4 HP, 4 HP to 3 HP, 3 to 2, 2 to 1. And when we're at 1 HP, we're gonna finish him off with a jump combo and out of sight, and then another jump combo. We only want to take one damage a turn, so we do need to refresh Chill Out. You'll notice it is no longer on the Master when the little down arrow status sort of shoots off in the distance, and it's not there anymore. So refresh Chill Out. We only actually need that for the next turn. Kind of too bad it didn't work out where we didn't have to use Chill Out again, but that's okay. Now in peril, we do jump and out of sight. I know this is a little bit of a longer fight, but I mean, hey, there's 75 HP we gotta deal with here, and I wasn't wanting to use repel gels. Repel gels are super useful for avoiding attacks without bow, and more importantly, without using FP. But you can only get five in the game, unless you use the little oink farm, and the little oink farm is kind of a pain, so I try to use those as little as possible. For the Master 3 though, we definitely need to use Repel Gels. We're gonna start at 1 HP, and this is a very, very luck-based turn 1. There is only a 30% chance of this working. The Master 3 only has a minus 1 turn modifier, so if you can get it to work out, you will get a really solid 4 turns of stop on him. And that's gonna make this fight go a lot more smoothly, we won't need to use as many Repel Gels. We're gonna lead off turn two with Power Bounce. You only need four. If you get more, you might be able to skip an Electro Dash, but I stopped early. And now we're just gonna do jump combos with Electro Dash. We will not need to use a Repel Gel until his uh, stop runs out. This guy's got 99 health though, so it's very important that we do all this damage that we can, and avoid his attacks. His attacks are crazy strong as well. So we brought two Repel Gels for this one. If you're doing Electro Dash every turn, and you're doing the Jump Combo every turn after a 4-cap Power Bounce, we will end up with an exact kill here 
which uh, always makes me feel really good. Like it's, yeah, we hit the number that we needed on that turn. Another reason I like using timeout for the stop is that it skips his attack animations, and as you can see, he does take his time, saving the frames. I wish I had more to say about this fight, but it's really just about avoiding his attacks and staying in peril. And if you, get, if you can get that timeout at the beginning, that's great. Oh boy, now we got the anti-guy squad. I'm doing another timeout. This has a 50% chance of working on each anti-guy. And there is a minus two turn modifier, but again, you add one because it is timeout instead of a stopwatch. I got it to work on all three, lucky me. Uh, even if you don't, there is a way to do this consistently, it's just not as fast. The main reason for using timeout here is I want to skip all their animations, because there's three attacks every turn. But yeah, we're going to use a smack on the front anti-guy on turn one, and then we're going to use a double dip shooting star. So that's 12 damage to all enemies. Shooting star is so good for this fight. We're also going to smack the middle one this time. I'm actually alternating between each anti-guy because we are going to use Bo's smacks to set up for a perfect kill. We're going to do 50, exactly 50 damage to each anti-guy. Now, turns after we use double dip. I need to do a refresh so that we have enough FP for double dip and out of sight. Because we will need to start going out of sight once the timeout expires, which is now. Double dip shooting star. It's really just a rinse and repeat here, however, it's going to change pretty soon. Because now they can move. Right now we have done 28 damage to each, and we're going to go out of sight with Bo so that we can actually live here, because they will deal 10 to 12 damage each unblocked. That is obviously way too much for us right now, at our really weak 10 HP. I mean, look how long these attack animations are. Timeout is nice. We're going to use a Repel Gel so that we don't die, and we get to watch all the animations again. By the way, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, which is really bad on me, but uh, when you use Out of Sight, Bo loses her next turn, so you can't just spam it every turn. And that's part of the reason why I just use that Repel Gel. We're gonna refresh to get our FP back for another Double Dip and another... Actually, no, just for another Double Dip. And we're gonna use another Alternating Smack, so starting with the front. Long anti-guy attacks. They are lucky that they're so cute. So double dip, repel gel, shooting star. So now we are getting invulnerability and getting some attack damage in. That's why double dip is such a good badge. It's one badge point three FP. I mean, it's just so good for this kind of thing. This fight might be possible without it, but... It's obviously not going to be nearly as clean. I should say this fight at level 1 shouldn't be possible without it. Obviously it is possible uh, without double dip if you're at more than level 1, which you should be at this point. Actually, I'm pretty sure the only reason that we even can be at level 1 at this point is because I've hacked my star points to never change. They are always at 0. They're almost all dead. They have all taken 38 damage. We gotta get to 50. And guess what? We got a double dip shooting star just for that. So yeah, status is very effective on the anti-guys. If you are not doing a level 1 no partner upgrades challenge, uh, Mega Shock is a good, good one to use. Maybe even Dizzy Shell. But yeah, that'll do it for our challenge.
Okay, last Junior Troopa fight. We're gonna start with Star Storm, and that's because we don't have a Mega Rush boosted jump. We entered at 9 HP. My badges for this fight are Mega Rush and D Down Jump. That 7 damage from Star Storm does matter. 7 is more than the Shooting Star. Shooting Stars do 6. So we're gonna Star Storm Electro Dash to get 10 damage. I'm gonna use Timeout again. Hopefully, you guys aren't tired of that. This one has a 60% chance of working and a minus two turn modifier. But that is still three turns with timeout. It's so good. Now we can just spam D down jump. This is going to do so much damage. Keep doing your electro dashes and we will kill him on turn five. I love how impactful D down jump sounds when you use it too. Yep, so just a regular jump combo because we are out of FP. And Electro Dash will finish him off. That's the 60 damage we need. Now we have Hallway Bowser. So we're going to start at 1 HP and we're going to have Mega Rush and Sleep Stomp. I know that's kind of an odd choice. But yeah, we're going to start off with a regular jump combo and out of sight. Of course, our regular jump combo was boosted by Mega Rush there. So we did 12 damage, and now we're going to use Sleep Stomp. This does not have a very good chance of working. But it's so important if you can get it to work, because it skips his Star Shield. And that's a pretty long animation, so we are just saving so much time here. By the way, Sleep Stomp has a 30% on Bowser like any other status on that fight. 30% is not good, but if you can get it, you are in there. And then Electro Dash will kill him. Time for the final boss already. Although he does have two phases, we're gonna start off phase one with a Mega Rush boosted D-Down jump, and we're real quickly gonna hide because otherwise we die. He used fire, which I like because that is a fast animation. We're going to use a regular jump combo, and we're not afraid for our life here because he is scripted to use Star Shield on turn 2. Before we use Star Beam and end the phase though, we do want to switch to Watt, and that's going to be really important for the start of phase 2. Once you use Star Beam here, it will not work, and that will end phase 1. Phase 2 of the final Bowser fight can go a number of ways because a lot of his moves are RNG. On Phase 2, Turn 1, we use Peach Beam, and we're going to use Electro Dash, and I'm really, really hoping that Bowser will use his Fire Attack, because if we block the Fire Attack, it will deal 9 damage and put us into peril with the Mega Rush boost. Which he did, and I was super thankful for that. It is a 50% chance that he uses Fire there. So we're gonna real quickly go invisible with a Repel Gel. I've been saving them for this fight. Been saving most of them, I should say. I had to farm the little Oink Farm a little bit. And now we're gonna use D-Down Jump and Electro Dash on turn three. He's already almost halfway dead. Okay, what's really important here is that he didn't use Star Shield. He does have a chance to use Star Shield on that turn. Um, I just didn't want him to use it on a turn where I use the Repel Gel, because otherwise we technically lose two turns instead of just one. But yeah, so we Star Shield here. I'm okay with that. We're gonna use Peach Beam, because we have to, otherwise he's going to absolutely destroy us and we do no damage. And Watt is a super important partner for this uh, for this fight, because Bowser has two defense, and Watt pierces defense with Electro Dash. So yeah, now we are back on the cycle that I want, where he's not using Star Shield, and we are invisible with this next Repel Gel. He 
It uses lightning here, which I'm totally fine with. The one that's scary is the star wave attack. We're gonna use our second D down jump here. And Electro Dash. Now star wave, you need to block with your partner. Otherwise you will lose your partner turns and that could be really, really crucial for a level one challenge. Yep, yeah, we are now invisible. And he used Star Shield again on a turn where I still have the Repel Gel. Just gotta use Peach Beam. So I've been glossing over probably the most important reason that we are at 1 HP, with the exception of maybe Mega Rush. In this fight, Bowser has 3 30 HP heals, and we're not gonna see any of them, because Bowser will only heal if Mario is 25% more healthy than Bowser as percentages of their maximum health. Mario is currently at 10% maximum health, so there is no way for Bowser to heal because if Bowser was 25% less health than Mario's 10%, he would be dead. Last Repel Gel I will need, we'll use Electro Dash. A lot of these turns are kind of the same, it's mostly about reacting to what Bowser's gonna do. If he does the Star Shield, then we need to use Peach Beam. If he doesn't use Star Shield, then maybe we have a chance to attack, or maybe we need to use a Repel Gel. It's a lot of reacting and a lot less planning, which I kind of don't like about this fight, because I do like being able to plan everything going into it. But yeah, that last jump combo will finish him off, and we got the Star Rod back. That is Paper Mario, completed at level 1 the whole way through. I want to give a shout out to Twinkie, Tribots, Kung Fury, Fluffy Dog Neptune, Tupai, Glitch Umbreon, Dainty, Food is Good, Tomosumi, Alderon, and Craw for just going the extra mile and just being awesome supporters of the channel. And a special thanks to all my other patrons and to everyone for watching. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed the video.